Welcome to Van Build Day 7. So today our goal is to finish framing on all of the walls for the van. Fortunately, most of the pieces were already measured and cut out in part one. However, today made me realize just how little of van building is building. I would say a solid 86% is sitting on your computer researching and planning. 1% is actually building. 5% is staring at what you just built and overthinking. And 8% is painting and painting. And then more painting. I'm only on framing and I've already used almost a whole gallon of primer. Painting is unfortunately just a time-consuming and inevitable task. I just want to go back in time to the naive version of myself that thought because I saw people do van builds in under a month online that I could too because I'd built one before, but some corners you just can't cut. Some things just take time. And while yes, some people can build vans in 20 days, personally, framing alone took me 5 days. But this isn't a competition and it's not a race. And personally, my only deadline is my desire to get back out on the road and traveling. So that's why I was a bit disappointed to have to call day seven a flop before it really even began because of the unexpected rain. However, that just means I have some time to rest and plan to make tomorrow even better. Welcome to Van Build Day 8. So our goal for today in the build is to finish that side of the van for framing. However, I've realized that I've kind of been avoiding talking about something. And at this point, it's kind of the Voldemort of the build. It's, you know, he who should not be named. But I realized last week when I was really upset about this beam, I never said why. Realized, one, I never painted it, which means I had to paint it while it was attached to the vehicle, which sucked. But what happened in the end that really made me upset was I thought these four bolts should have made it super beyond sturdy. See, this is the most important piece of framing because my entire body weight is going to be on it every single day. I don't want to have to worry that like in my sleep I'm just going to collapse into the floor. Um, so it just was really shaky and I was like, what did I do wrong? You know, like I did force the bolts a little bit because they weren't perfectly straight in. What I did was I added these two by twos and now it's super sturdy and I still have to add one here. So it's not going anywhere. It's super strong. I don't know if people do that normally and they don't talk about it, but I thought this was going to be super sturdy on its own and it wasn't. But it's super sturdy now and that is all that matters. So bippity boppity booyah. Can I get a booyah? Booyah! All right, so today we're going to start with the bed support on this side. And I watched a lot of videos hoping to get it perfectly lined up this time. I found a new trick. We're going to try it. We're going to see how it goes. All right, so the trick that I found was taking painter's tape, running it along the rib, and then puncturing where the rib nuts are, taking that off, lining it up on the board here. All right, so let's try this out, see how it went, um, before I come up with any worse ideas to get us killed or worse. Worse expelled. The method I used on the other side of the wall was putting paint on the bolts and pressing the board against it and drilling in those locations. And with the board this size and the weight of it, it was a bit hard and I just ended up measuring five times just to be sure and never felt confident. I just realized that these pigtails make me look like Moaning Myrtle. Do you see it? I just realized how many freaking Harry Potter references I've made today. And I'm not going to apologize, but I thought I'd bring it up. <laughs> All right, and then to double check this measurement, what I did was I just marked what was halfway down the hole and it's all one inch and then went along the lines and saw how much was different in between and it all matched up. So measure twice, cut once. Though I measured that one five times. So what is the meaning of anything? 
Another really important thing to pay attention to is making sure you drill these holes straight down. Any angle is going to make the bolts not line up correctly. And as a side note, something I didn't mention in part one about rivet nuts is that you could actually opt to use plus nuts. They're very similar but open in a cross shape and actually have an even stronger hold. But honestly, my rivet nuts worked fine in my last fan, but in case that's something you want to do, just know it's an option. All right, it is time to test it out and see how I did. All right, moment of truth. All right, we've got two in straight. We've got three in straight. I think it might work. I almost don't believe it. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to try first. With these, like most things that you screw in, I didn't put any fully in at once. I did each a little bit at a time. One, we got one. Okay, we're thriving. And then one of the worst possible things happens. The rib nut is spinning. <laughs> <sighs> Why is the rib nut spinning? It's in a hexagon hole. They said that wouldn't happen. Pull back out again. That one's also perfect. We're thriving. Two out of four. Um, so these clips are a little all over because I edited out so much because I make weird faces and have like evil decrepit witch posture while putting the bolts in and I straight up look like a gremlin who should be guarding a creepy cottage in the woods. Number three is in. Honestly, it warped the metal a little bit to make it happen, but I don't care. That one was so much worse. So now we just gotta fix the problem of the spinning rip nut because look, we couldn't we couldn't have it all. The universe doesn't allow that. Something has to go wrong. Ooh, maybe if I get like alright. Say hello to my little friend! That unfortunately didn't work, and after I tried doing it by hand, but that was to no prevail as well. The only option was to pull the board off and remove the spinning rib nut. And the thing is, I already had a really strong hold, and there was no promise me attempting to remove the rib nut wouldn't make things worse. So I just decided to leave it. This board is actually stronger than that board originally was. Like this one barely moves. It still moves enough that I don't like it that I'm still gonna add the two by twos, but it's better than that one was, even though I have a spinning rib nut, so. I decided to add just two screws on both sides of the rivna just for some extra peace of mind and then called it good. All right, we're taking a little lunch break. I think we're doing good. Um, I have a berries and cream frappuccino, so I already know what you're thinking. Berries and cream, berries and cream. I'm a little lad who loves berries and cream. All right, so what I want to hit next is the upper beam. Lego. I am just going to mark where I want to put the screw. I'm just doing like every other. So the reason I'm marking them like this is so that I don't screw where any of the pre-drilled holes are in the metal. And I also mark how far down on the wood the metal bar is so I don't miss it when I put the screws in. The reason I personally choose to put the screws halfway in the wood outside of the van is for a few reasons. First, I am one person and I only have two hands, so I don't want to be fumbling trying to find and place screws. And I need one hand to hold the board and the other for the drill. And sometimes because I'm going through metal, that takes both of my hands on the drill. Also, because I'm screwing into wood, there is a lot of dust and I don't want it in my face or all over the van, so I'm just keeping the mess outside. Also, usually I'm a very efficient and organized person. I'm the kind of person who has every step written down before going outside to build for the day, and it keeps me super organized. But I was trying to save time this morning, and that is how I didn't remember until later on, unfortunately, that I wanted to use marine adhesive on the boards I was screwing into the metal like I did on the floor, and that I wanted to use wood glue on the wood boards I was screwing into each other. I was a little sad about it, but there are only a few boards missing it, and I eventually remember, and it won't make or break the build, but it definitely made the hold even stronger. I could physically feel the difference. So just to note about picking where your screws go, there are two reasons I avoid spots like these where there are two to three layers of metal. One, I have weak arms and I might not be able to actually go all the way through. Two, that means more layers of metal being thrown around the van, increasing the risk of rust. But I will say a location like that could increase the stability of the hold. However, once I remembered to use the caulk adhesive, I just applied that over every screw and I'm pretty sure I could put my body weight on those suckers and it wouldn't go anywhere. One layer of metal or three. Ow. <laughs> 
all right. Sometimes when I'm screwing these in, I can literally hear that, that like where the screw is being drilled in, that metal that's, you know, going, it's going through, I can hear that metal just being scattered across the van and I can literally find right now seven pieces of metal. So that is definitely a reason that doing rib nuts would be an intelligent way to go. I love how I keep talking about rib nuts, like they're so great, they're, you know, there's so many benefits. And I'm like, but I just, I won't do it. <laughs> but I mean, end game, end of the day, the metal pieces can lead to rust, which can lead to me having to tear out all the walls, which could suck one day. But um, that's a problem for tomorrow. But the most important rule was why do today what you can put off till tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> what is today but yesterday's tomorrow? Huh? Just a reminder, if you want to know how much all of this is costing me, make sure to check the description. Alright, now it's time to break out the Craig jig and attach these supports. Here's what I use. An assorted starter kit of different length screws, a Craig jig that changes sizes and comes apart to be for one or two holes, and two magic wands. So step one is to adjust the jig and magic wand to the size of the wood you're drilling into. Then put the magic wand into the drill, slide the jig onto the wood you're using, clamp her on down, and screw into both of the holes. Then BAM! You've done it. You are thriving. Gold star for you. I mean, look how beautiful. And how dirty. All right, well, now you just gotta do it like 30 more times every single day until the end of the build. <laughs> Personally, my Craig Jig kit was only like $40, but they have ones that are much faster to use and more bougie, but with built-in clamps and vacuums for the dust, but I'm just out here trying not to spend my entire budget for my van on just the tools. So this is what we're using for now. Give me a fashion show. Vogue is giving life. Goals is giving Mariah. So something else to be looking out for when installing these is that they are straight and flush so that when you install the walls, they look as stunning as you do. Did I mention you look stunning today? Wow, you are just absolutely glowing. So to check if it's flush, I just pull out an extra board and make sure it sits flat. I also, when putting in the screws, put the first only halfway in, then I'll put a screw in on the opposite side in halfway, and then I'll go back and install the first one completely. When you don't do this, the board tends to want to twist and turn, which will erase all the work you just did to make it flush. So 
So something really important we haven't talked about yet is the framing layout and knowing where to place these boards. Someone actually said to me, I'm just gonna wait until you're done and I'm just gonna copy yours. But you can't actually really do that. Just straight up copy someone else's framing layout unless their finished van, their end game is going to look exactly like yours. I place these boards based on where I'll need to hang things and drill things later on into the base walls for support. So for my kitchen, for my closet, to my bed, that all has to be mapped out for this to work. However, if that sounds like a lot of pressure, I understand, but just remember, you can always remove a beam or add another one later unless you're gonna put up the walls right now. So no need to add extra just in case if you can add it later on if you decide you need it. This beam, I'm just putting it here. It's not gonna actually support anything. It's just going to support my back when I lean up against this wall so I don't feel like it's concave in here. So just kind of like more support, but not for hanging anything on. I then had to proceed to take a 15 minute long break just to find my drill, but we found it, so it's all right. I'm not a Hufflepuff. I am not a particularly good finder. On that note, I have been wearing a Slytherin shirt all day, but I'm actually a Ravenclaw, so don't let it fool you. And that is how I framed the walls of my camper van. I'll see you next episode to frame the ceiling and that odd space between the wall and the ceiling.